And now, recipe for murder. Because murder. Yeah, murder. Ooh, hello, Jessica. New portrait. Uh, you've been in a case, and you've definitely been in a case. And, hey, I recognize you. You're the clerk from the previous one. All right. Tell us a story, Jessica. Tell us. The cab driver glanced at his rearview mirror, and his eyes followed the tall woman as she exited the airport door and Ooh, entered his taxi. Tall. I'm not quite sure where I want to go, actually. After I've amnesia. missed my connecting flight home, and I have two hours to kill before the next one. Murder. Do you know a restaurant nearby that serves something a bit better than airline food? Smorgies. Hey, aren't you that famous mystery writer, Jessica... Fletcher. Fletcher. Yeah, I've seen your face in the paper. I don't waste my time reading mysteries. But Jessica I know who you are. Jessica detected a smirk in the man's voice as he continued. I work real hard, 10, maybe 14 hours a day. You know, so when I read, it's a newspaper. Okay. Fair enough. I see. Newspapers have too much violence for me. I prefer to curl up with a good book when I get home. With murder. Yeah? I do most of my reading during red lights. Th that's incredibly dangerous. Really? I thought cab drivers did most of their driving during red lights. Are we still at the airport? Hey, you're all right. I'll take you to the best place in town. McDonald's. Hoffingers is a great Hot French fingers? chef who came here about five years ago. He married uh, Mary Bird. She was one of those fancy a society women, and, and they opened a big restaurant. Man. She's a gourmet who fell in love with Hoffinger's cooking and then fell in love with Hoffinger himself. Oh, she loved the good reason I know, you know all what this I mean. is because it's in the newspaper plenty this year. There's I a, actually read the tabloids. There's a restaurant critic named Franklin White, and he's got some sort of thing for Hotfinger. He keeps giving him lousy reviews. Because Hotfinger won't give him the hot finger, if you know what I mean. Don't they spot him when he comes in? Are you driving yet? That's just it. He wears a different disguise each time he goes into the restaurant. Yeah, there's also a silent partner in the restaurant. Well, at least he was silent until all the hoopla began. Hoopla. His name is Arnie Fallon, and he's an old-time gangster. You know? Anyway, uh, Fallon doesn't know anything about food, but he knows he's losing his money in the investment. Ah. And the word is that he's ticked off at Hoffinger for not keeping up the reputation of the restaurant. And not and the word the is that Hoffinger's either. wife is fooling around. And, and wants out of the marriage. Wow, this is and a lot of And the word is newspaper. that the restaurant... You can learn an awful lot during red lights. Maybe you could try Jessica driving. Jessica sensed something was wrong as soon as she entered the restaurant. It appeared at first that she was the only one there. Then well, she the noticed several person. police officers wandering around just inside the door to the kitchen. Oh, okay. Walking toward the door, she heard a woman's tearful voice. He called me to say he was preparing a dinner just for the two of us. A romantic candlelight dinner like the one we had the night he proposed to me. What accent was that? Jessica peeked into the kitchen and took in the scene. A dozen police officers gathered around a woman sobbing into her handkerchief. Uh, sobbing? This must be Mary Bird. Huffinger's estranged wife. Well, and judging by indeed. the body line chalked on the floor, she is his widow. Ew. A short, heavy set man stood next to the widow. His toupee did not quite match the hair on his head. <laughs> Restaurant critic Franklin White, no doubt. Jessica remained silent and watched the officers continue the interrogation. Judging by the way the fish had been cooked, the police lab determined that Mr. Hoffinger was working until at least half past two. Okay. When exactly did you arrive here tonight, Mrs. Hoffinger? That was kind of quick. I came over at three. We were going to dine before the restaurant opened. It was quite a shock when I found Hoffy dead next to his table. So I called 911, and then he came in and acted very suspicious. Suspicious. She pointed to Franklin White. 
What are you implying? Uh, my editor is my this witness. Isn't a I was with him from, from nine this morning uh, until uh, about an hour ago. I, I left uh, to come to dinner. I did it early. I didn't want to run into the Major D. Uh, he knows me, you know, and I was afraid he'd throw me out. Oh, I'm sure, stop there, touching there's it. bad feelings between me and this place, but I'm a critic, not a murderer. Okay. If Mrs. Hoffinger wants to get to the truth, stop ask her about it. this. As White reached for the jar labeled Mary's Dreamy Creamy, Ew. a policeman shouted, Hold it. Our preliminary what? investigation Who suggests that Mr. Hoffinger was poisoned. I'm one of the programmers. <gasps> My goodness. Was the poison in this? This is the low-calorie food substitute I'm marketing through my new food company. Oh. I had it here delivered last night so that Hoffie could try it out. Looks like he tried all right. Uh, here's the recipe. Uh, mix one half cup cream with Ooh. one egg, add salt to taste. Didn't I see a teaspoon in Hoffinger's hand before you took him away? Hmm. At that moment, Jessica was startled by a beefy hand that pulled her shoulder back roughly. Ooh. She jumped back as a burly man barged past her into the kitchen. Out of my no, way, no, 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 Burley. You're not Burley. Wow, if it ain't my old buddies in blue. <laughs> what are you guys doing in my joint? And where's that bum Hoffinger? Ain't I lost enough dough? I want more hot fingers. That must be Arnie Fallon. The man's reptilian eyes searched the room. But what does he the expect? Gangster the gangster appraised like the Fallon. situation faster than any detective. Wait a minute. I see what you guys are doing. Somebody bumped off Hoffinger, and you guys waited around so you could pin it on me. Well, this frame ain't gonna work. I wanna call my lawyer right now. I can prove I was in meetings all day. Uh, no, no one, no one I said can... anything. What? Jessica entered the kitchen. May I interrupt? Now. I don't mean to intrude, but I think I can prove Mr. Hoffinger committed suicide. <gasps> if I could just get a look inside the bottom of this food processor. There was a puzzled but obedient silence as Jessica turned the device on its side. Does anyone have something I can use to unscrew this panel? Mm. Mary Bird rummaged through her purse for a second and produced a small nail file. Will this do? Ooh, I was mm, sitting maybe, on it. Maybe, but perhaps one of the gentlemen has something better. Jessica raised an eyebrow in the direction of Franklin White. Not me. All I carry are my credit cards and keys and, uh, let me see, will a dime work? <gasps> yes. Not quite good enough. She turned to Thallon. You look like a resourceful man. Can you help? Fallon fumbled in his pocket and handed over a pocket knife. This'll do it. And you can stab yourself Jessica too, Jessica fiddled lady. with the knife until she found the screwdriver blade. She then re-examined the food processor for a moment and put it down right side up. All eyes followed her with rapt attention as she spun around dramatically. <gasps> Forgive me for my little white lie. I never thought for a moment that this was a suicide. Huffinger was killed, and I can name his murderer. Can you name Sucker. the murderer? Complete the jigsaw puzzle picture and examine it for vital clues. Clearly it was the cab driver. Um, so yeah, but let's head straight to the puzzle and um, time lapsing.
right, that took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Um, all right, let's see if we can see anything. Well, we've got some uh, tomato paste, I'm guessing. Mom's bacon powder. No, wait. Oh, yeah, one small can of tomato sauce. So, yep. And there's the tomato paste. Um, pretty much the only thing I would say that looks a bit weird is okay, you've got full potatoes. <laughs> like, not even, like, um, <laughs> peeled in, in, in the pan. That's, that's not right. Um, there looks like a whole heap of cloves have been, you know, unpeeled. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, look, it says two cloves. And now look how that's not two cloves. That's like two whole bulbs. Um, it says one egg and there's two. Uh, what the? Did they just put the peaches in the blender? Well, they haven't even turned it on. Ugh. Very streamy, creamy. Ugh. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, head back and, um, pick our murderer. I think it's gonna be him, just cause look at him. Oh wait, I have to... Bleh. Let's go to solve. I think it's gonna be Arnie Fallon, just because he was the killer in the last case. And probably also would be the one most likely, you know, not to know how to do cooking. You're right. Yeah. You named the murderer. Yeah, sure. Come on, tell us, Jess. You'll probably have Mrs. some insane Huffinger, thing. You may stop worrying about being accused of murder. Murder. True, your dreamy, creamy product did contain the poison, but I'm sure it was put in after it left your hands. Ooh. The murderer arrived here earlier today, probably had a friendly chat with Hoffinger over a cup of coffee. Coffee to which he added the dreamy, creamy, spiked with poison. Ew. He cleaned up that evidence well, but forgot to shut off the coffee maker. Why would you put As you can coffee? see, it's still on. Then the murderer took out the food you see on like the table. And yuck. He had prepared all this the night before, following the recipe as best he could. The plan was to make things look like Huffinger had spent several hours waiting for the fish and potatoes to cook and cool before he added the spices and grated cheese, thus giving the impression that he was alive and well until this afternoon. Hmm. That furnished the killer with his alibi. But it's obvious that this meal wasn't prepared by Hoffinger or anyone who knows anything about cooking. The recipe calls for two cloves uh -huh. of garlic. I got that but one. two full heads of garlic have been used. Bulbs. The recipe calls for a TSP of evaporated oh, I milk, didn't see that. which stands for teaspoon. But a tablespoon has been used. Oh, yeah, I can see that. And only someone totally unfamiliar with what goes on in a kitchen would put whole, unpitted peaches into a food processor. Haha, <laughs> I got that the one as well. The tomato paste. Oh, wait. Used instead of tomato Peaches salt. and cream? And oh, baking peaches powder and cheese used even. in place and of cream. baking soda. Oh, and tomato and it becomes sauce. Oh, obvious our killer oh. was no gourmet. What is with this recipe? But the most damning evidence is in this can of evaporated milk. If the regular can yeah. opener had been used, the can would have two triangular holes. Oh. But it doesn't. It has one thin slit. The type of slit that would be made by a can opener found on a knife like the one owned by you, Mr. Fallon. I suppose you've learned your lesson now. Don't In try jail. to cook up a murder scheme if you're not familiar with all the ingredients. Well said, Jessica. Well said. And, um, that's pretty much it for this case. Um, we'll be back uh, next time with, uh, what case is next? The desktop murder. Won't that be exciting? Yes. Yes, it will. See you next time.